this section, we're going to look at a different family of functions. Instead of looking at the linear functions, we're going to look at the quadratic functions. Anytime that you're checking out a new type of function for the first time, it's a good idea to plot some points and see what patterns get made and what types of things are happening in our graph. So to start out with, uh, what I'd like to do is evaluate, let's use the function f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 8 as an example. What I'd like to do here is to go through different values of x, um, figure out the y values that would go along with them by evaluating our function, and then plotting those points on a graph to see what kind of shape comes out and what types of properties we can identify. All right, so to start with, if we're using f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 8, what I'd like to do first is plug in negative 1 for x. So just a reminder of what function notation looks like. So we're going to write f of negative 1. Negative 1 my input. I'm going to put negative 1 in for each of these values of x. So negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 minus 8. Now you can plug that whole expression in your calculator or do order of operations. Here we're going to end up with 1 plus 2 is 3, minus 8 is negative 5, and so I can think of this ordered pair as the point negative 1, negative 5. Let's suppose I want to use 0 as my input. Here I'm going to find f of 0, and I'm going to plug in 0 for x each time it shows up. So 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 8. Uh, 0 minus 0 minus 8 gives me negative 8, and the point 0, negative 8, is a point that I can put on my function. Let's go ahead and start a coordinate axis over here and see what this plot's looking like. So if here's my coordinate axes at negative 1 and negative 5, here's my first point. My next point happens at 0, negative 8, so that was negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. There's my y-intercept, because that's where my um, graph is crossing the y-axis. Here I'm going to evaluate 1 in my function, so I end up with 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 8. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1, minus 8 is negative 9, so now I have the point 1, negative 9. If I go over to 1, down to negative 9, it's right here. Notice right away you can see that this is definitely not a linear function. These points, if I drew a straight line, could not go through all three of those points. So I've definitely got something else going on here. Let's try some more points and see if we can continue to get a feel for what this shape is. If I use 2 as my input, I'll have to do 2 squared minus 2 times 2 minus 8. That gives me 4 minus 4, which is 0. Minus 8 gives me negative 8. Oh my goodness, and notice here my y value is going back up again. So at 2, I'm back up to negative 8 again as a second point, um, or as another point. Now let's try 3 as an input. Let's see what happens. 3 squared minus 2 times 3 minus 8 gives me 9. Minus 6 is 3. Minus 8 is negative 5. So 3, negative 5 is a point. And then I'll wrap up here by picking uh, 4 as an input. So here I get 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 8. We get 16 minus 8 is uh, 8. And then minus 8 again gives me 0. And I have the point 4, 0 as another point on my graph. Now, as I go through and plot to connect the points, uh, there's a couple of things that are kind of interesting here. Um, one of which, so we have values that are coming down, kind of hit this low point and come back up again. If we were to connect the dots, it would look something like this. It comes down through here, down there, up here, and up the other side. This is this shape that does this that is called a parabola. And this is the shape that all quadratic functions make. And remember, quadratic function is any function where the highest power of x is a squared power, like this one right here. And it's a polynomial, so all of those powers are nice whole numbers when you go through. All right, so this is kind of our basic shape. There are a few key characteristics here that I'd like to point out on our graph and a couple of ideas about how to do these calculations. Um, eventually, rather than just randomly picking points, we'd like to have some special properties that we can use so that we can quickly and accurately come up with the best, most useful version of the graph that we need. The first thing that I'd like you to see is that we have a, this fun parabola shape. And we can have parabolas that open up like this. And we can also have parabolas that open down like this. Um, it's very helpful to know when you first look at an equation which direction it's going. It makes sure that you can kind of 
fill in the correct shape as you go. Um, parabolas that open up happen. They're kind of smiley, and these happen when you end up with, when you have a what we call a positive x squared term. The squared term is the one that most influences what goes on. And so if this x squared term here had a positive number in front of it, then our graph would open up, and that's what happened here. Here, our coefficient or value in front of the x squared is assumed to be a positive one, and since it's positive, then it opens up. Our alternative is to see a parabola that opens down like this, and this happens when you have a negative x squared term for your function. Uh, and we'll see some examples like that in the later videos. Now, one of the most interesting pieces of our parabola function is what we call the vertex. The vertex is the turning point of our graph. Uh, if our graph is opens up like this, notice that the vertex happens um, at a minimum value. And if we have a negative x squared term, so it opens down, then the vertex happens at a maximum value. So that's kind of a neat thing to, to pay attention to as you go. Now, how do you calculate the location, the vertex location where that turns? And because it's a maximum or minimum is very, very useful in a lot of applied mathematics. So if you're trying to find the maximum profit for your company or the um, minimum size that you would have to make something um, or minimum costs, uh, all of those types of things will, will, would require finding the vertex of a parabolic function or a quadratic function with that parabola. So let's, uh, the, how do you find the vertex? Well, we actually have a formula that we can use to find the vertex. And the formula that we use is this. This gives us the x coordinate of our vertex. It's negative b over 2a. Now, we've seen this type of thing before when we use the quadratic formula, and it's all going to kind of come back from the same place. The general form of any quadratic function is this. x, oh, let's try again ax squared plus bx plus c. And if you remember when we did the quadratic formula, the a was always the number in front of the x squared, the b was the number in front of the x, and the c was the plane number that stuck behind. We're still going to look at things exactly in that way when we try to use this formula. So here, x is equal to negative b over 2a. My a was 1, my b was negative 2, and my c was negative 8. So here, I'm going to have b, negative b, so negative, negative 2, divided by 2 times a, which is 1. Negative, negative 2 makes a positive 2. 2 times 1 is 2 on the bottom. And I end up with x equals 1 as the x-coordinate point of my vertex. And if you look here, here's x equals 1. And sure enough, my vertex is right at that point. Now, if you want to plot the point, you can't just know x equals 1. That's not enough information. You still need to find the y-coordinate. So then you would have to plug the x value into the original formula to find the y value of the point. And so we could do that if we plug x equals 1 into the formula. We actually did that right here, and we got negative 9. And that's why that point happens at exactly that place. Now, the vertex is super awesome because it is it, in fact, lies on what we call the axis of symmetry. Every parabola, if you slice it completely down with a vertical line right through its vertex, it's completely symmetrical on each side. So it's like a mirror image of itself. Uh, sometimes problems will ask you to identify the axis of symmetry because the axis of symmetry is a vertical line. All we have to do, vertical lines have a formula of the form x equals whatever um, value we want that to cross through. And in this case, x was equal to 1, so that would be the axis of symmetry. And it's always going to just be x equals the x-coordinate of the vertex, which we can find by that x equals negative b over 2a formula. All right, the next thing, the important piece of information that we'd like to identify is the vertical intercepts and the horizontal intercepts. And we found these for linear functions before, and we would we really find them for horizontal intercepts and exactly, vertical and horizontal intercepts for exactly the same way when we're working with a quadratic function. The vertical intercept happens when we set x equal to zero and find y, or evaluate that function and find f of zero. So in this particular case, if we put 0 in for x in our formula up here, we get 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 8. 
and that gives us, in this case, 0 for x, negative 8 for y, and that's where it goes through right there. So vertical intercepts, pretty easy to find. Set x equal to 0, find y. Because parabolas are functions, I can actually cross this sf. You will only ever have one vertical intercept when you try to do a problem. So that's kind of cool. Now, in terms of horizontal intercepts, we're going to solve that by setting y equal to 0, or if we're in function notation, remember, we can think of that as setting f of x equal to 0. And then we need to solve for x. This is going to be a little bit trickier with a, with a uh, quadratic function. So what we're going to do, if we go back to our original function, f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 8, we're going to put 0 in for f of x. We're going to have x squared minus 2x minus 8 um, as our function, and now I need to solve for x. Um, because this is a quadratic function, we have an x squared and an x. We cannot isolate the x by itself. So instead, what we would have to do is get one side of equal, equal to 0, and then solve by either factoring or the quadratic formula. We already happen to have one side equal to 0 here, and this particular problem does factor nicely um, into x minus 4 and x plus 2. So we can go ahead and factor that out, and then remember we set each factor equal to 0 in order to solve. And in this case, we end up with x equals 4 as one of our horizontal intercepts and x equals negative 2 as another horizontal intercept. Um, if you come up here to our graph, Notice the horizontal intercepts are where you cross the x-axis right here. Here it happens at the point 1, 2, 3, 4, so that was where this came. Over here, notice it crosses the graph pretty much right there at negative 2. And this should be illustrative of the fact that we had that axis of symmetry that went through the middle. It was 3 to the right of, to, on the x-axis, so it would be 3 to the left on the x-axis to get a matching point over there. And both of these values would be your horizontal intercepts in this case. Because we're dealing with quadratic functions, it should be no surprise to see that we actually get two solutions when we're looking at horizontal intercepts. And visually, that shows itself very clearly here. The last piece of information that you're going to be asked to find when you're talking about, and you're regularly asked to find this when you're talking about functions, is the domain and the range. Now, when you're talking about um, the domain and the range of a quadratic function, I find it very, very helpful to draw the graph first before I try to identify it. The domain, again, remember, is uh, all possible sets of x. And in this case, we can really put, put any value in for x into the formula that we want. Um, in this case, what we say is the domain for our quadratic function and any quadratic function is all real numbers. Sometimes you'll see a symbol like this in R with two lines on it to denote the, the set of all real numbers like this. This parabola will go on forever. We just would get higher and higher values of y as we go up in each direction. Uh, this shape where you go down where you hit a maximum or a minimum at the vertex and then it goes back the other way is what happens, excuse me, on every type of quadratic function when you go to graph it. The range, on the other hand, is uh, the set of all possible y's. So let's take a look at that. This one is actually going to be very dependent on the graph that you're doing. And here, what we want to pay attention to is, is the uh, there's either a maximum or a minimum happening at the vertex point. So right now, the lowest y value that I could possibly take on happens right here at the vertex at negative 9. So all of, the, all of the y values that I get other than that have to be bigger than or equal to negative 9. So you want to make sure that you look at the vertex point to determine where your values are, and then look at the graph to see. Because with a, with a smiley face graph like this one, um, my vertex happens at a minimum, so all the y values are going to be bigger than the vertex point. If we had a frowny face parabola like this one over here, notice that my value would be a maximum value and all the y values from the graph in the range would end up being smaller than that value. So the range is, uh, for the domain, it's always going to be all real numbers for all of your quadratic functions, but your range is going to be limited and it's going to depend on your vertex. when you make that decision there. So these are just kind of some key points that you want to do and that you want to use. And when you do this, if you can identify these pieces of information here, we don't have to randomly pick points here. These points worked out nicely because I picked a function that I knew worked nicely to illustrate this particular shape. However, most functions are not going to have vertices that land on nice numbers, and they're not going to have nice, lovely 
values for your x-intercepts or your y-intercept. And so you can actually use these types of calculations in order to identify important points to plot so that you can actually see this bowl shape, which is really what you want to see as you sketch the graph. Um, I don't just want to see random points. I very specifically would like to see this shape because that's where the interesting types of things start happening. Uh, in the next video, we're just going to go through a couple of examples of some different types of functions where we're going to go through and identify each of these key pieces of information and use that in order to sketch the graph.